please come on the dais and please take your seat. Just give a big round of applause for the yes. Let us welcome the dignitaries on the dais by offering a bouquet as a mark of respect. So let us start this session with a small prayer. Oh. Sangha Chadvam Samvadatvam Sambho manam si janata Deva bhagam yatha purve Sanyana na upasate Sanyana na upasate Om shanti Shanti, Shanti. Thank you. Prams to you all once again. It's my proud privilege to welcome the Honorable Minister of State for Ayush, Women and Child Development Government of India, Dr. Munjapara Mahindrabhai Kalubhai. He has been the member of various committees as a member of parliament in government of India. And uh, he is also very eminent cardiologist, very well-known social activity, uh, activist in the state of Gujarat. Sir, he is a, having a vast knowledge in the medical education and also always our honorable minister of Ayush used to say do rupai ka vaid two rupees doctor he never charged he charged only two rupees and he served more than give treatment to more than 10 lakh people so that much the devotion and dedication the Ministry of Ayushya is very fortunate to have a, such a wonderful uh, medical doctor and very nice, well, human, be human being. Sir, on behalf of the Ministry of Ayush, on behalf of CII, on my own behalf, it's my proud privilege to welcome you, sir. Hearty welcome you, sir. So we have with us uh, 
uh, Dr. H.R. Nagendra, Chancellor S. Vyasa, he's joining online. Dr. Hamsa Yogendra Ji, Director of the Yoga Institute. Dr. B.N. Gangadhar Ji, he's the President of uh, Medical Assessment and Rating Board, National Medical Commission. And he was the former Director of NIMANS also. Sri S. Sridharan Ji, Advisor Krishnamachari Yoga Mandiram. Sri Ujit Seth Ji, President uh, National Yogasana Sports Federation and also the president of uh, Trans Stadia here, very well known figure in the Gujarat. And we have with us uh, Dr. Satya Lakshmi, the director of National Institute of Naturopathy, and Dr. Raghavendra Rao, the director of Central Council for Research in Yoga and Naturopathy. We have with us the local expert, uh, Shri Dr. Vijay Kumar, who is the registrar of Lakulish University. So, and uh, the many dignitaries, the ambassadors, eminent experts and student friends and all friends, uh, it's my proud privilege to welcome you all. With these few words, I request the Honorable Minister, sir, for his opening remarks. Dr. Munjapara Mahindra Bhai, sir. Honorable Dr. Ganga Dharanji, Honorable Dr. H.R. Nagendra Ji, Virtually Judeway Mrs. Ansaji, Yoga Charya Sri Dharanji, Basau Reddy Ji, Udit Seth Ji, Satya Lakshmi Ji, Vijay Kumar, Raghavendra Rao Ji, and also all the participating delegates. Indin Ka Amara, a investment and innovation meet Ajam Akri Padam Pojge for Kapi Jagamira speech tha Kapi program me actively participate gal almost ye Achka Mira last speech Likin e Antim Padam ye Yase Amara Ayus New India ka start with I. It is a matter of great pleasure for me to be part of this unique session, India Hills, emphasis on yoga. Knowledge of medicinal value of plants and other substances and their usage go back to the time of the earliest settlers. The vast amount of medical knowledge that has come down to modern times is the result of long evolution through trial and error and exchange of know-how between diverse communities and regions. The process of exchange and assimilation continues and today traditional medicine practice are obliged to accommodate to the norms of norm modern medicine. There is growing awareness among the scientific community and the general public about intrinsic value of traditional medicine and these systems have entered the mainstream to complement biomedicine. The challenge today is to integrate the best of different healing tradition to meet the healthcare need of contemporary society. We find immense reference about such things. Vasudev Kutumkam is the mantra of all Indians, which means the entire world is a family. Sarve Bhavantu 
Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramay is our daily prayer. We always aspire for Loko Swastha Sukhino Bhavantu. Even though during the British colonial period, official status of the traditional healing system were relegated to secondary role and the Western medicine become dominant. Still, this system continue to serve the ailing masses in their own way. Post independence, the government of India made several efforts to promote and popularize the Indian system of medicine, so much so that as on date, it is having an independent ministry to deal with these systems. In last few decades, there has been growing interest in alternative form of therapy globally. People across the globe not only visit India as a tourist, but also reap the benefit of traditional system of medicine for their various health needs. India has become one of the most sought medicinal tourism countries as on date. More than 5,000 years old tradition yoga is now regarded in the Western world as a holistic approach to health and is classified by National Institute of Health as a form of complementary and alternative medicine. Yoga is a form of mind-body fitness that involves a combination of muscular activity and internally directed mindful focus on awareness of self, the breath and the energy. Four basic principles underline the teaching and practicing of yoga as a healing system. Principle number one, first principle is human body is holistic, entire compromise of various interrelated dimension inseparable from one another and the health or illness of the any one dimension affect the other dimensions. The second principle is individual and their need are unique and therefore must be approached in way that acknowledge this individuality and their practice must be tailored accordingly. The third principle is yoga is self-empowering the sadhak, his or her own healer. Yoga engages the sadhak in healing process by playing an active role in their journey towards health. The healing comes from within instead of from outside source and greater sense of autonomy is achieved. The fourth principle is that quality and state of the individual mind is crucial to healing and the individual has positive mind state healing happens more quickly very if the mind state is negative healing may be prolonged yoga is recognized as form of mind body medicine that integrates an individual's physical mental spiritual component to improve aspect of health particularly stress related illness Viewed as holistic stress management technique, yoga is form of complementary and alternative medicine that produces a physiological consequence of events in body reducing stress response. The scientific study of yoga has increased substantially in recent years and many clinical trials have been designed to assess its therapeutic effects and benefits. The regular practice of yoga promotes strength endurance, flexibility, and facilitate characteristics of friendliness, compassion, and greater self-control by cultivating a sense of calmness and well-being. Sustained practice also lead to important outcome, such a change in life perspective, self-awareness, and improved sense of energy to live life fully and with genuine enjoyment. The practice of yoga produces a physiological state opposite to that of the flight or fight stress response and with that interruption in the stress response. A sense of balance and union between the mind and body can be achieved. Yogic practice enhances muscular strength and body flexibility, promote and improve respiratory and cardiovascular function, promote recovery from and 
treatment of addiction, reduce stress, anxiety, depression, and chronic pain, improve sleep pattern, and enhance overall well-being and quality of life. As the country battles COVID-19 pandemic on war footing, India's traditional system of yoga has been established as a means of boost immunity, improve overall health and well-being, lack of proper sleep, poor nutrition, and leading a stressful life all lead to a weakened immune system and vulnerability to sickness. The system of yoga can be better preventive and healing tool besides promotive and rehabilitative methods. If it is adopted by the people on a regular basis, there will be a less chance that we spend on medical expense. Thanking you. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. Uh, you had given a very uh, shown a very good path for all the speakers to in which direction we have to move and make this uh, entire discussion uh, very fruitful and uh, help us to make uh, some policies in the interest of the common public. The very uh, beauty of this system of yoga is uh, it goes with uh, any medical system, goes with the uh, IV system, modern medical system. Even in many uh, traditional systems across the globe, uh, because of its uh, importance in the mind management and also the spiritual dimension of uh, personality, which has been addressed uh, from the beginning in the teachings of yoga. So that's why uh, the healing aspects have been developed later part. But yoga as education and education to uh, give the training to the body to keep always fit to live 100 years to achieve the goal of life. That's the entire living is a spiritual living. So that dimension, that education takes us to many other dimensions. Then in the recent past, it's mind body medicine, mind body medicine has been developed in the management of many non-communicable disorders. And in the recent uh, COVID pandemic, the Indian traditional system of yoga has been established as a means to boost immunity, improve overall health and well-being, especially for the isolated patients and in the many other stressful conditions, it has come to the rescue. Now, during the last two years, yoga has gained much popularity because of its wider dimensions. So to address all these issues, we have uh, more than eight people, eminent people from different parts of the life. They are addressing us. Just to say one, uh, when Patanjali introduced Ashtanga Yoga, Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi, and he said three important words. Ashuddhi Kshaye, Jnana Dipti, and Viveka Khyati. So, such a wonderful science. So, whenever you give, and what is the result you are going to get? Patanjali mentioned that. Then he proceed on giving the technology. That's why the philosophy, we have to see the science, convert into technology. What you are seeing in the forms of apps, they are the applications we are giving. With this respect, and uh, the first keynote speaker from uh, for this session is Dr. H. R. Nagendraji. He is the Chancellor of uh, Yes Vyasa University, and he is serving as a President of Vivekananda Yoga and Sandhan Samsthan, Bangalore, since 2000. And he has also served as more than a decade as a Vice Chancellor of Swami Vivekananda Yoga and Sandhan Samsthan, Yes Vyasa deemed to be university. And everybody knows the contribution of uh, Guruji is popularly known as for the in the field of yoga therapy and research. He has more than 150 research publications and guided more than 32 PhD. And most importantly, he was the chairperson of the International Day of Yoga Committee. And under his able guidance, many of the protocol 
has been brought in and all these things, the development you are taking, uh, looking in the last uh, seven to eight years, somewhere the Guruji has guided us. And with these few words, uh, it's my privilege, Guruji has joined online. It's my privilege to welcome Guruji. I do hope so all of you welcome him by big round of applause. Dr. H.R. Nagendra. My dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you all to this global summit, India Heals, Emphasis on Yoga. Honorable Prime Minister, in his brilliant speech, made it clear to the world community at large that yoga is not merely yogic postures or physical exercises. It is a science of holistic living. It's a way of life. And Based on the teachings of Swami Vivekananda, he said that yoga has benefits for everyone with its holistic vision of Gnana Yoga, Raj Yoga, Bhakti Yoga and Karma Yoga. The four streams of yoga, working with the intellect, Gnana Yoga, working with the willpower, Raj Yoga, working with the emotions to gain mastery over the emotions, the Bhakti Yoga and bring all that to our action that is karma yoga, convert every action into a yoga. So, with this holistic vision, the UN announced that June 21st should be celebrated throughout the world as International Day of Yoga. What a response. You know? People have started enjoying the wonderful streams of yoga embedded in a nice protocol that was developed in India, which contains all these features set in a very subtle way into the 35 minutes yoga protocol, which can be practiced by everybody. And more and more people should practice this. Apart from the world records that we had in the first International Day of Yoga, we know that yoga has started spreading around the globe. And in India, the Ministry of Ayush set up this task of bringing this to 20 crores of people last year. Almost 90% of that we achieved. This year it's much more, 25 crores of people in India itself. Every nook and corner, in every village it should go. And people should practice yoga. And that the one that can prevent diseases, promote positive health, apart from dealing with different ailments. Therefore, under the Indian Yoga Association, associated with the Ministry of Voyage and the Ministry of Health, a huge pan-India program was taken and we made a thorough survey of people who have diabetes, type 2. And as we have seen, India is racing, go reach China, which is number one in diabetes, to become the diabetic capital of the world. Therefore, right there, our Honorable Prime Minister said we have to contain this and could not become the diabetic capital. And we started yoga, bringing yoga, and wonderful results have started coming up. And the American Diabetic Association gave this as the biggest you know, research that was done during the years for which an award was given there. Why yoga? When we have such fantastic medical allopathic system which deals with all this this is so effectively. Why yoga? You know, the tremendous contributions of the modern medical world in the last century. We were able to deal with infectious and contagious diseases and the new ways of handling them through vaccines and antibiotics became the forerunner and this became the hit all over the world and people started accepting this evidence-based, research-based allopathic system and we called it the modern medicine, the conventional medicine today. All people all over the world accepted this in the real norm of dealing with this. But the WHO, World Health Organization announced that we will bring health for all by 2000. People were so enthusiastic. But soon came a bigger challenge, bigger challenge of what we call today as non-communicable diseases. Asthma, diabetes, hypertension, heart problem, epilepsy, migraine, irritable bowel syndrome, cancer, 
all psychiatric problems, neuroticism and psychosis, everything started hitting headlines. And the number of sufferers went on increasing more and more, more and more. And naturally, the modern medical world started developing suitable and very powerful pharmacological interventions and surgical interventions. And as we progress, more and more such powerful pharmacological medical interventions are coming up. And unfortunately, we have not been able to give complete relief or cure these ailments. Once a diabetic, ever a diabetic. Once you have hypertension, it's for life. Once you have cancer, your days are numbered, I come to pass. Why? With such tremendous research and fantastic achievements of the conventional medicine or the modern medicine or the allopathic system, why this has happened? I see a basic reason of that. That is, modern medicine is based on modern science. Modern science developed in the western part of our globe, Newton and Decatur, they started the ball rolling almost 400 years back. And tremendous research with the best of the intellectuals in the world, we started understanding more and more of this entire creation. Soon we found this creation infallible. It is very complex. And we do not know how even a stone drops down, how the rain occurs, how the thunderbolt occurs, how the lightning occurs. Want to talk about gods, goddesses, and whatnot? No, we can't do that. Therefore, let us start understanding the physical world first. Once you complete understanding physical world, then we can go to other things. This is how science started. Now we are in a fortunate position that today we know everything in the physical world and every object in the physical world is made out of molecules, atoms, protons, neutrons, fundamental particles. They are all made of quarks. There are packets of energy, and everything is nothing but energy, electromagnetic field, and the gravitational field, and that is the field, the energy field, we can say. And therefore, we understood the structure of this whole universe. And then we also understood the laws that govern them, Newtonian laws, which are studied in high schools. But as we went deeper and deeper into the small world of electrons, protons, neutrons, then we had to go to the higher laws, more generalized laws of theory of relativity, quantum mechanics, and probabilistic mechanics. And therefore, we had a complete understanding of the physical world in its structure and also the laws that govern them. Therefore, anything physical, we have been a big success, putting man on the moon, building skyscrapers, underwater tunnels, information technology, and dealing with all these infectious and contagious diseases, and even the virus, we were able to deal with this the pandemic of Corona, but it took time to build up the vaccines and build up the medicines and all that. But we have the solution. But these ailments of the non-communicable diseases are not merely physical. They are multidimensional. Mental restlessness, emotional upsurges, deep-rooted co psychological conflicts, all are at the base of this stress and the stress-related NCDs that we are dealing with mental restlessness, anger, greed, jealousy, hatred, infatuation, arrogance, all are shattering. Our entire lifestyle is changed in the modern era of science and technology, and we are developing a tremendous amount of stress at not only the physical level, but the mind at every level. And the root cause for all these sensories are contained in the mind, in the Manomai Kosha, and that's called as Adhi. Adi is a big imbalance, uncontrolled speed of the mind. So that imbalance causes the problem that Adi percolates down to the physical frame through the prana kosha, bringing imbalance in the prana, comes down to the physical body, a stress reaction, triggering the hypothalamus, bring about the autonomic imbalance and the endocrine imbalance, which comes down to the physical body. Depending on which organ is the weakest, you succumb and you have problem. What all we do in the modern medical interventions is Pharmacological interventions and surgical intervention can deal only with the physical body. So what is needed is not only to deal with the prana and the mind and the emotions and the intellect, everything we have to do that. And therefore, we have to have a total approach. So the modern medical experts have come to understand that 
the allopathic system alone will not do. We have to add on the complementary systems, the traditional systems. Therefore, the World Health Organization started this traditional system as a complement to be done. And among all these things, yoga has hit the highest acceptance. Or just number of papers going on. And since it's non-pharmacological in approach, it can be easier and adjunct to the present pharmacological interventions. You know? And that's what is to be done. Therefore, India is the forerunner of this heritage of yoga, which is thousands of years old. And with a broad spectrum of Gnana Yoga, Raj Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga, an integrated approach of yoga therapy has been evolved. And we work at the body level, prana level, mind level, emotional level, intellectual level, and with a complete understanding of the whole creation, and that can deal with these ailments effectively. And we have a large number of research papers that have come, nearly 800 from Svyasa University itself, and this has shown the usefulness of yoga to this modern end series, particularly for diabetes, for hypertension, for cardiac problems, and cancer, there is a lot of research going on and it can become more and more, more and more effective. Therefore, India has started offering this total solution to the people at large and people from all over the world have started coming here and also trying to learn yoga, yoga therapy and its implications everywhere. Standardization has started taking place to deal with these ailments, what type of yoga you have to give, how much you have to give and when you have to give, all these things have been brought forth and the first condition is it should not cause harm. That's the first condition. Then the benefits of yoga should come up. And that's what is happening today. Therefore, we invite all the members of the Global Summit to partake by coming over to India and then participating in the big movement that's taking place by the setting up of the international health services and also bringing integrative health in all of our hospitals. And that is a big call that we're giving in the context of this global summit, which is coming up in a such big way. And we welcome you on and wish you all the best for prevention and promotion of positive health and to deal with this modern NCDs to meet the challenge of the modern era. Namaskar. Dhaniwad. Thank you, Guruji, uh, for joining us. And you rightly emphasize uh, Stress plays an important role, and uh, yoga has the uh, uh, solutions and uh, many protocols help us to elevate the stress and its consequences. Now it's my privilege to uh, once again uh, introduce and welcome Dr. Hamsa Maji. Uh, she has to come yesterday night because of the last moment some emergencies. Uh, she could not uh, come and join us physically, but uh, she is going to join. Uh, with us online. Uh, everybody knows, I particularly know Maji from more than three decades. In the early 80s, uh, uh, when uh, TV is not so popular, she used to come in the afternoon around 3 o'clock, 3 to 3.30. Yoga for household. Very simple way Hamsaji used to explain about the importance of yoga for the household, uh, especially the women. Dr. Hamsa Jaydevanji is currently the director of uh, Yoga Institute, Mumbai, the world's uh, oldest uh, organization of yoga center, which has uh, celebrated its centenary last two years back. She is the leading face of householder yoga and has conducted over one lakh theoretical and practical sessions of yoga till date. A very renowned uh, first lady of uh, yoga, she made the nation proud by sharing the stage along with Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji at the first International Day of Yoga in 2015 at New Delhi. Recently, the Yoga Institute has received the Prime Minister's award for its uh, contribution to the promotion and development of yoga. With these uh, few words, uh, I welcome Madam and also request uh, Dr. Hamsaji to say a few words as a keynote speaker. Mahamsaji. Namaskar to you all. I regret 
that I couldn't meet you all in person due to some unavoidable circumstances here. But the technology has become very strong and we can still contact each other like this. And I'm glad to connect with all of you through this video. Today, as we are meeting together to discuss yoga education, I feel that it needs to become part of every academic syllabus. Yoga education can strengthen our education system and help it creating a healthy and mature society. None of this will be possible without qualified teachers. These professional teachers trained in the science of yoga can revitalize not only the education system, but also everyone's life. This demand that yoga education could be formalized and conceptualized in a right way. We need to make sure that yoga teachers study yoga not only for their career development, but also for their self-development, primarily self-development. I always say that every yoga teacher should have three things. These three qualities are more important than any qualification or certificate for a yoga teacher. First quality, being a yoga student. Second, understanding about others. Third, feeling responsible. Know that in life and in yoga, there is no end to learning. So teach yoga, not as a teacher, but as a student. The course name may be called teacher's training course, but you should always be in a student's mode. Believe that you are always in a yoga learning course. It is important for teachers to be lifelong students. That enhances their understanding of yoga. Our own students can teach us a lot. Your students questioning, doubting can teach you a lot. A good teacher is one who gives practical exercises to students and that exercise which he himself also is practicing. A good teacher, when he's teaching yamas, don't hurt others. First step of yama is ahimsa. Don't hurt others. Don't be rude. Don't compare. Here, teacher himself should also practice that teacher doesn't get angry, teacher doesn't compare, teacher doesn't put students down. The second quality which yoga teacher should have is to understand somebody's mind, to understand somebody's intention, read somebody's mind. All this quality can come only if teacher tries to understand his own mind, tries to read his own mind correctly. By trying to understand your own emotions, behavior, reactions, you will slowly develop the ability to observe others, understand others very well. So always observe yourself and understand every state of your mind. Understand the nature and attitude of your students and deal with them accordingly. Some may be difficult students, but then spend some extra time after the class. Develop friendly relations with such students. Finally, remember, that our culture is such a culture where it is mentioned Guru Devo Bhava. Being a teacher is a position of a huge responsibility. Just as a patient approaches doctor with a hope, so does every student approach yoga teacher with hope. It is important for a yoga teacher to train the student to look within. Like why one gets angry? What is the root cause of certain behavior? how to control the mind, etc. You deal with the mind of a person, the power and responsibility in you is almost unparalleled. A change in the mind, however small, is the beginning of much larger changes outside. For example, if you could convince your mind to wake up early in the morning, you bring about vast changes in person's health. Their kidney, lung and heart, everything would be grateful to you. This is the power yoga teacher holds. Every yoga teacher must feel this responsibility. They should approach this career with seva bhav to serve the humanity and help people. 
such an attitude contributes best to the society. Today, yoga has become a question of a booming career. Globally, people need yoga and hence yoga teachers. Today's changing lifestyle has caused many health issues. Yoga seems to contain powerful answers. The need for this answer demands more yoga teachers. And I feel India, the birthplace of yoga, will also create professional, compassionate and duty-oriented teachers. Here in the Yoga Institute, we have produced more than one lakh teachers and they are now spread all across the globe, spreading the message of yoga. One of our primary course is teachers training program and we had given highest importance to this one particular course because if the teachers are trained well, then our half job is done. Other than that, we have been guiding in making yoga content for UGC and CERT in yoga education, etc. Past 25 years, we have been teaching kids from BMC school. The Yoga Institute is doing its part to its maximum capacity. So let's take yoga forward together. Once again, I congratulate the Ministry of Ayush for organizing such an event. I thank Honorable Minister Dr. Muj Parakalubai, Dr. Rajiv Kumar, Dr. H.R. Nagendra, Dr. B. N. Gangadhar, Yoga Charya S. Sridharan, Sri Udit Tate, and my dear Dr. Basav Reddy. I hope to see you all in person very soon in near future. Let's work together in this direction. Let's develop a beautiful world together. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you, madam. To rightly emphasize the healing principles of yoga lies in yoga education. And uh, uh, they are the fundamental principles. So one has to be first a sadhak or a practitioner. Then he can be a teacher. A good teacher can only a a good therapist rightly said the importance of yoga teacher thank you madam now we are switching over from online mode to the physical mode it's my privilege once again uh, introduce and welcome uh, dr b n gangadharji he is now the president of medical assessment and rating board national medical commission but he is very popularly known in the yoga community in the ayush community for his rich contribution for the research on yoga, mental health, and uh, many other aspect dimensions related to mind and its management. He is the professor of uh, Emeritus Professor of Integrative Medicine, and uh, as I said, he is the former director of NIMANS. And uh, when he was the head of the department, and uh, NIMANS has established an advanced center, and now first time in the history of uh, medical sciences an integrative medicine department has been started when he was the director of the nipans and uh, a yoga cadre has been developed in the medical college first time a big round of applause for his contribution for the research in yoga with these few words i uh, invite professor gangadharji to say uh, express his views on india heals dr gangadhar Honorable Minister uh, Sri Munjaparaji, my fellow speakers on the stage, and all the distinguished delegates in this meeting. I will take less than 10 minutes, hopefully, to present to you some of the research that has happened in the country and in the world on one aspect of yoga we always talk about uh, there's a saying in sanskrit chita dahati nirjeevam chinta dahati jeevanam you are continuously worried and depressed you are likely to damage yourself and how yoga can be an instrument in not just reducing 
psychiatric or mental conditions, but also correct the bodily mechanisms which has been caused by these uh, mental stresses and how we bring back correction into the body by way of these uh, yoga practices. Now, I'll have to take you to what we call as uh, the spiritual dimensions of health. And Ayurveda always emphasized a spiritual dimension. And more recently, in the last 30 years, the WHO is also considering how to introduce the spiritual dimensions of health uh, into clinical practice. And in fact, people are beginning to realize that uh, yoga practice has a spiritual dimension, that feeling of connectedness which uh, spirituality talks about has been used as a means to get the psychiatric status well, the depression getting better. And yoga is the uh, important role, a toolkit in bringing out these spiritual dimensions into our health. And how does it do it? And what are the bodily mechanisms in this is what I would like to talk about using mental health approaches in yoga. In other words, using yoga for say various psychiatric disorders, there is a list of psychiatric disorders I have put up on the screen here. And there are many more. In all these psychiatric disorders, yoga has been prone to be useful. And there are of course several challenges. Uh, many of these have been addressed. And one of the challenges which we have addressed, I'm illustrating in this brief talk about the uh, biological markers of yoga which have been uh, studied with respect to mental health. And uh, the work that has happened in yoga practice, yoga in application in psychiatric disorders, has made an impact in the international scenario as well. For example, this Canadian uh, guidelines for mood and affective disorders has included yoga as been, uh, there is a sufficient body of evidence to introduce yoga as an adjunct treatment. Likewise, the National Institute of Clinical Excellence, uh, UK, has also introduced yoga as a potential add-on treatment in the treatment of chronic psychotic disorders, schizophrenia and affective disorders. So, put together, evidence clinically has been built up. What I intend to demonstrate now is a list of biological changes, biological markers which lead to answering this question, Chita Dahati Nirjeevam, Chinta Dahati Jeevanam. How my bodily corrections also happen while I am treating psychiatric disorders with yoga. One of the, uh, these are the series of issues that I am going to be talking about. Uh, one of them is the effects of uh, yoga on the body through brain. One of the practices in yoga is chanting Om. When Om is chanted, some of my limbic structures are deactivated. When my limbic structures are deactivated, I get calmer and my emotional uh, levels come down. And as a consequence of uh, this, or as a consequence of this inhibitory action on the emotional system, there is also what is called as increases in the levels of a neuroinhibitory hormone, neuroinhibitory transmitter called as the GABA. The GABA transmitter can be studied uh, by various methods. Before and after yoga, we are able to demonstrate what is called as the uh, cortical silent period. Before yoga and after yoga, it gets longer, indicating that my brain inhibitory mechanisms are better. We may all be wondering, why should a brain become inhibited why should the brain become deactivated? Uh, the emotional centers are deactivated. Emotionally calmer brain has a significant role in actually making the individual become less depressed. In fact, even in depressive disorders, I don't want you to pay attention to the details of the graph, but what is important is to demonstrate experimentally that these mechanisms have a role subsequently towards the end of my talk, what it has. Uh, the inhibitory mechanisms were deranged in depression and you gave yoga, the cortical silent period gets longer when compared to merely walking. Walking also produced uh, antidepressant effects. Yoga also produced antidepressant effect. 
but yoga started correcting the brain mechanisms and this uh, we use the same cortical silent period to demonstrate this effect elsewhere people have also shown in the brain itself this inhibitory neurotransmitter levels went on to increase following yoga and this was possible uh, to be demonstrated by using a method called as the magnetic resonance spectroscopy you do all this you become calmer brain tends to inhibit itself on this emotional uh, arena and then what happens your excitability and your stress levels come down and so the cortisol which actually damages the brain i will come to that towards the end cortisol levels drop if you practice yoga and in depression cortisol levels are higher and you gave yoga more people more people uh, obtained drop in the levels of cortisol following yoga intervention and with this brain repair mechanisms actually get better you reduce the levels of cortisol you are more likely to repair your brain more dynamically the repair mechanism is mediated through a brain uh, chemical called as the brain derived neurotropic factor this brain derived neurotropic factor actually is lower in depression uh, compared to healthy subjects and once you start start treating them these levels go up and these levels going up is very well demonstrated with yoga intervention so yoga intervention causes inhibition of the emotional structures lowers the levels of cortisol improves the brain repair mechanisms and this brain repair mechanisms getting better by this brain derived neurotropic factor we have been able to replicate more recently with another method uh, which is an in vivo method uh, in experimental animals in both ways we have been able to demonstrate that this brain repair mechanism following yoga in humans is well elevated following the practice of yoga this brain derived neurotropic factor is unfortunately lower in depression and so depressed individuals continue to lose the gray matter in the brain and you are chronically depressed you are more likely to be losing the brain structure and we also demonstrated that in people who lost cortisol they obtained higher levels of the brain derived neurotropic factor again illustrating a link between the anti stress effects of yoga and a facilitation of the brain derived mechanisms and elsewhere people have shown that chronic practitioners of yoga don't lose their brain gray matter with age the sloped line indicates like in all of us as we get older we lose our gray matter we keep doing yoga regularly we are less likely to lose the gray matter as much as the others do who do not practice yoga this is again indirect supporter that the brain is protected and perhaps the other parts of the body as well are protected if one is continuing to practice yoga but here i am using this particular slide with respect to yoga applications in mental disorders and we were able to demonstrate even in elderly individuals who had what we call as the minimum minimal cognitive impairment also called as the mild cognitive impairment where they have some memory symptoms when you give them yoga 6 months later that yellow speck you see is a spot where we call as the hippocampus the memory brain the memory retaining part of the brain gray matter which actually gets larger when they practiced yoga for a period of 6 months so yoga actually protected the brain and this hippocampus shrinking with age was prevented in a 6 months practice of yoga and lastly brain connectivity gets better in fact yoga is a connecting and increased connectivity in the brain also gets better following practice of yoga one of the systems of uh, connected brain areas is called as the default mode network this default mode network is both in the anterior and in the posterior parts of the brain this network gets better when a person has practiced yoga and this is a group of schizophrenia patients one illustrative patient i have demonstrated here in schizophrenia patients 
this network get deranged schizophrenia you know is a disconnection of the brain of the mind and it manifests as an illness and in these individuals when they practiced yoga their connectivity got better and as you can see the red one got brighter into the yellow one in the posterior network also to some extent in the anterior default mode network and lastly i wanted to bring it your attention to this slide these are the areas of the brain which gets uh, lost the gray matter shrinks when a person is chronically depressed the chitta dahati nirjeevam chinta dahati jeevanam and uh, yoga has a potential to not only reduce the chinta but also reduce the dahanam the chinta dahati jeevanam is also completely and comprehensively addressed i thank all of you for listening to me most of the work done here was in the department of yoga integrative medicine at nimhans and i thank all my colleagues who helped me in this there is my email in case there are any doubts you can always mail to me i will be happy to answer i thank all of you for being patiently with me in this thank you professor gangadhar ji as we are talking about uh, the research and evidence needed to quantify the uh, healing systems in ayush and there are ample number of uh, research papers published in peer review index journal and few of the uh, important uh, findings uh, of the research has been presented by professor gangadhar now uh, it's my privilege uh, to introduce and welcome shri shridharan ji and uh, shri shridharan ji has come from a very famous uh, yoga tradition or lineage of krishnamachari yoga mandiram uh, t krishnamachari ji is known as uh, the uh, father of modern yoga he lived uh, 100 years and uh, live a yogi life and healthy life and he is the living demonstration of the true yoga master and he has developed a very unique uh, yoga therapy technique from the yoga rahasya he written a book and uh, his disciple uh, you know the famous bk sengar ji tk videshika char ji patta bijoyeshi and others so sridharan ji is the proud student of tk videshika char ji and uh, teaching yoga for the last more than four decades and he was the managing director a managing trustee of the krishnamachari yoga mandiram for more than uh, uh, nearly a decade and since last more than 15 years he is being associated with uh, uh, our institute and ministry of ayush now is the vice president of uh, indian yoga association with these few introductory words words i request uh, shri shridharan ji make his presentation on yoga therapy shri shridharan ji Namaste, Dr. Munshpara Mahendra Bai Kalubai, Honorable Minister of State, Ministry of Ayush, Ministry of Women and Child Development, Government of India, Dr. Basavreddy, Dr. Gangadhar, and other co-panelists, and uh, distinguished gathering members of the gathering. I will start uh, my session with a prayer. vedic prayer which talks about health and uh, we must know that vedas is timeless and they talk about health in that om bhadram karni hi bhishrunu yam deva bhadram pashye makshabhir yadatra स्थिरंगुष्टुवागम सस्तनु व्यशेम देवित यदायु स्वस्ति न इंद्रो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्व स्वस्ति नस्ताक्ष्यो अरिष्टनी 
स्वस्तिनो बृहस्पतिर्धा ओ शांति 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 दिस प्रेयर इज यूनिक एंड यू कैन हियर द वर्ड स्वस्ति स्वस्ति कमिंग अगेन विच इज वेलनेस ये स्टेट ऑफ इक्लिब्रियम एंड द मंत्रास आर सो पावरफुल इन योगा थेरेपी even as you hear this small prayer itself you can see some amount of health that comes to us the very vibrations will make it swasti no brihaspati ki data to let the uh, supreme being give the uh, wellness to us so what i am <coughs> trying to explain out is see yoga therapy existed even before the introduction of western medicine into india how do we know about this is the yoga sutra about which dr gangadhar said a few words is one of the oldest text on yoga by patanjali which is considered easily 3000 to 5000 years but patanjali says that yoga exists before me i am only giving them to you in this fashion so whatever i have talked about in the yoga sutra existed even before me but even if we take patanjali as the origin first it is 3000 to 5000 the word vyadhi comes in that in the yoga sutra in the first chapter 30 it is called illness in sanskrit vyadhi is illness the commentators are largely defining what that vyadhi is it is talking on the basis of ayurveda about the vitiation of the three dha three doshas and all so vyadhi is considered as one of the antaraya impediment and it is considered as equivalent to chitta vikshepa which means it is a mental distraction and confusion that's what totally the presentation of the gangadhar was so in the ancient days they have considered vyadhi as Yeah, the names are different. It is a mental chitta vikshepa, distraction and confusion. Now let us go to what is the solution? Immediately, they talk about meditation, and Ishara pranidana atva, tasya vacha kaha, tasya vacha kaha pranavaha, tad japa ha, tad dartha bhavanam. These are the sutras which says do a particular type of meditative practice. uh which will bring down the mental agitation the moment the mental agitations are brought down that itself the healing process starts and healing process continues of course when you are talking about meditation yoga sutra is very clear it is ashtanga yoga which is going to give you the meditation because actually the asana practice takes pranayama pranayama takes you to the dharana dhyana samadhi so it is not simply meditation separately it is a, a, a holistic approach of combining all the eight limbs of the yoga and one more important thing in yoga therapy is the approach is similar to ayurveda and uh, or equivalent that's where they share a lot of uh, you know universal application heyam hetu hanam upaya and this is unique approach because a problem is not directly taken up from this symptomatic level only symptomatic level is taken which is yes there is a headache there is a blood pressure rise there is we are taking them but we will try to understand the hetu for that what is the cause and we will have a goal and that is where the individuals completely differ we don't have courses for blood pressure or these things we have a course for the individual as a holistic in yoga upayam comes the means and it is again individualistic upayam is separated for every individual even though two people may have the same similar problem the upayam or the the basket of tools will have to be taken and put together differently so let us uh, and it is like an ayurveda approach hmm? now human system in yoga therapy is understood differently in fact as we were saying it was prior to western medicine 
the human system understanding existed. It takes into account Ayurvedic way of looking at the human body, but beyond that also, there are five segments into the human system, Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya, Anandamaya. From that it starts. And mostly it talks about the basic five elements. Our system is made up of the basic five elements and the three gunas and how they work together. See, though they go to the kind, minutest part, which are the three gunas, which cannot, like an atom, which cannot be seen, but their operation is what is happening in our body at the gross level, subtle level, and all. So the human system is different for every one of us at all levels, including the mind. And yoga therapy looks at the human system holistically. So the present approach, now slowly we are moving back towards an integrative medicine. It is just not complementary, supplementary. I have had, I have the uh, privilege to be working on the yoga therapy for the last 40 years. Even when I was uh, in a different profession, my teacher put me on into the yoga teaching and I did part time and later for 20 years I was full time, I became full time. So my first student he, he alerted to me is from therapy only. And what I have been finding over the period of time is we were called as complementary, supplementary, but those words are not there. It is integrative medicine. Integration is to join together. Why integrative medicine came? What is the reason? It is because by choice, the care seeker is taking an integrative medicine. You may say, don't go to this, this system, don't go to that system, but they would be taking and they may not disclose. Instead, better accept what the person is doing and we will go by integrative. So only thing is how to integrate, how to integrate. And that is where most important point is, healing systems are basically divided as invasive or non-invasive. And the invasive persons, in fact, we in 1990s uh, did a, a, a study of how to integrate the various systems. And our teacher, Desika Chara, along with a <clears throat> doctor uh, who is a student, they did an interview, collected all the interviews of all the independent medicine systems, including Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, Homeopathy. Everything was done in 1990s, which was published as a paper in the newspaper and become a book. And um, I'm giving the book to uh, <coughs> A minister to show how uh, we have done it long back and what was the outcome of that is I was a part I was a part of that uh, study which was going on uh, in those days we are talking about 30 years back the allopathy Ayurveda Unani and others they will say we, are, we we don't want to deal with those people because they are all having chemicals I don't know what that chemicals are but we are ready to go with yoga because it is non-invasive of course, pranic healing, reiki, they are also in the same pedestal where it is non-invasive. But today, the scenario is different. In fact, we have integrated medicine uh, institutes which are coming up. So, but even then, the therapy, yoga therapy is very unique because it is non-invasive and nobody will, uh, will have anything to do as an against it. No form of chemical is given. Yoga comes under non-invasive category and acceptable all forms of, all other forms of. Yoga prepares the body in a way to give way for the medicine to work by removing all the impurities, which we call as malas. So doctors can give medications. But what happens? The medicine doesn't work because there are impurities. Along with the impurities, the medicine joins and becomes a very big impurity. And we are unable to throw out the impurity. Yoga has the unique way of throwing out the impurity just by exhalation. That's all. The best form. In fact, the sutra says, Pracharadana Vidarana Bhyamva Pranasya. Just to exhale, exhale, exhale. That itself is a great medicine. But how to exhale? We are exhaling always. But there is a way of doing. We need to learn it properly. So to remove the impurities is more important.
When you remove the impurities, the chemicals that are given inside starts working. And even if there are any side effects, on account of the medications, they are also removed. It is the best form of preventive, direct application, and follow-up stages of illness yoga. That's what we say. If someone comes and says, I'm going in for a surgery, we say, you please go ahead. Go for the surgery. But prior to surgery, come to us. We will teach you some breathing so that you can take the surgery. After the surgery, you start coming to us. Sometimes people even breathe properly during the surgery itself to see that uh, their ailment is brought down. And direct application. We have the way in which directly all the illnesses are also addressed. Follow-up is the most important in yoga therapy. We are doing it at various levels. Healing is from within and prana holds the key. This is the most important point. Healing is from within. We are not manufactured by any in any company. We come out of the nature and nature has given the potential to heal itself and it is the prana which holds the key. Yoga tools particularly pranayama, addresses this aspect. If I, am, if I have an ill health, yoga says, it is prana prakopa. The prana is not reaching those parts, and it is because of the mala there. Remove it, and it reaches. If a, teach, if a person comes to our teacher and says, I have, Krishna Mataria, and says, I have a problem in my throat, you know, he says, chakra here is not receiving the prana. So every, every part of them has got chakras and the chakras are those which feed the prana to the nearby places, organ. Finally, what are the advantages? Holistic, takes mind and body together, talked about by Dr. Vasavadi and Gingadhar and others. Non-invasive and hence no side effect, but let us be very clear that yoga if therapy, if not properly given, or yoga for that matter, can also give more harm. The Hatha Yoga Pradipika talks about it, and there is a verse which says that yoga can remove all illnesses when it is done properly. If it is not done properly, it will create illnesses. It talks about certain illnesses which will come, like asthma and other illnesses itself is given. So we need to be very, very careful, and yoga therapy training is very important. Make scarcity independent and feel more confident. That is most important. Can work together with any other system. Need to be what need to be done is seminars to bring all systems together and present their approach, which I have said we did 30 years back. Now we are going to start doing it. Submit the various research reports and case studies. Remove wrong impressions from followers of other healing systems about yoga therapy. That way we are presenting the, our work to all others. And thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you, Sri Sidharanji. Just uh, at 12 o'clock, 12 noon, uh, there is going to be another important session in this August Harling. Uh, therefore, we had to rush and uh, complete the entire session. Uh, my humble request to all the speakers, let us brief and uh, put forward the main points. Now it's my privilege to uh, introduce and welcome uh, Professor Dr. Satya Lakshmiji. She is the very proud director of uh, National Institute of Naturopathy and her Ministry of Ayush. She is the very well-known naturopath and uh, yoga therapist uh, serving from most more than three and a half decades in the public domain. And under her leadership, the NIN, the Naturopathy Institute of Naturopathy, has uh, achieved several dimensions in health and healing. With these uh, very few remarks, I uh, request uh, Dr. Satya Lakshmi a few words on India Hills. Dr. Satya Lakshmi. Namaste. Respected Irish Minister, Dr. Manjparaji, and all other distinguished speakers, and our Special Secretary, Ayush Patak, sir, and the Joint Secretary, Kavita Garg, madam, all other fellow 
Ayush colleagues and uh, delegates. So I just uh, uh, will broach the important areas where yoga can work as a healing tool. So first of all, I would like to uh, spend more time on young uh, minds because there are many youngsters attending this uh, program. So yoga can offer, particularly for girls, because uh, the kind of environment in which we are living, we are ending up eating too much of sugar and the metabolic syndrome has become a major issue and obesity has become a major issue. And uh, women bodies being more sensitive, metabolic syndrome related diseases and the polycystic ovarian disease and then resulting in a hell lot of health problems. So yoga can be a very, very uh, simple and very effective tool to address all these issues because any amount of ability to exercise restraint, control, self-discipline can come easily through regular practice of yoga, hence it is possible. And who doesn't want to look good and energetic and young and beautiful. So yoga can provide all that. Body sculpting is absolutely possible with doing regular practice of yoga. Then maternal care is another very uh, uh, area which can be looked into seriously by using yoga as a healing tool, particularly preconception to antenatal to safe delivery and natural delivery practices. And then very healthy parenting also and post delivery practices. I think if yoga can be integrated in these areas also, and India can lead the world in uh, making a healthy world. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam, highlighting the importance of uh, yoga and healing in a very short and uh, very cute manner. Now it's my uh, privilege to introduce, welcome and introduce uh, uh, Sri Udit Shetji, a very young and dynamic uh, entrepreneur, a sports lover, and uh, he is the president of uh, National Yogasana Sports Federation, uh, recognized by Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. And he is the head of the uh, Transtadia Group, you all know in the uh, Ahmedabad, a wonderful trans stadia has come in a, under the PPP mode with government of Gujarat. And he want to be a, uh, introduce sports and uh, make it an industry. And several uh, he has to promote yoga and also yoga as a competitive sports and Last uh, few years of interactions in the ministry and uh, personally, he has several uh, innovative ideas how to take up this uh, where yoga into various dimension and also provide an opportunity for the sports person to recognize globally. With these uh, few words, and I request uh, Sri Vudit Chetsi put forward his views. Sri Vudit Chetsi. Thank you, sir. First of all, a warm welcome to our Honorable Minister and uh, thanking him and the Ministry of Ayush for giving us an opportunity to participate today in the Global Ayush Innovation and Investment Summit. Um, it's a really uh, path-breaking initiative that has been taken. Um, before I uh, start my uh, small uh, points of view, I'll request uh, the AV team to just play a small video.
this entire uh, stadium and uh, everything Maya is actually designed for you. And please have a great time, uh, you know, performing and uh, showing what you can. This event is just the last time I participate, and it is going to be a part of something this year on that day. Definitely, our youth camps will come forward and they will be a part of this event again. I invite all of the athletes to be a part of this event again. Sport of the tomorrow is the sport, the sport of Olympics divided. So we have for the Choco facility Mili hai. It was amazing. How many of you actually do yoga? How many? And at what age did you start? 0 to 10? 10. 10 to 20? And 20 onwards? That's right. So when we talk about yoga asana as a sport, the entire mandate that was given by the Ministry of Ayush and the Ministry of Sport was to take Yogasana to a sporting ecosystem because we wanted to create the youngsters to come into Yogasana as a sport. Today, when people come into yoga, they come for a illness, they want to de-stress, they want to, you know, understand meditation, spirituality, they want to understand themselves. But kids, Kids have to be attracted through something which is exciting. And, uh, and therefore, Yogasana as a sport is something that we've uh, worked very hard in the last two years. Um, before me, our Honorable uh, Director of Muraji Desai was the President of Yogasana Sport. And he had incubated it and then he handed the baton over to us in the uh, ecosystem. Um, it's about reinventing the entire uh, thought process of uh, Yogasana and uh, packaging all the uh, yogas for television. For example, if all of you are into yoga and you're uh, looking at the television, you're going to be very bored if you are just seeing somebody doing one asana because it's just still. But if, if we can package it like in Kabaddi, we can package it like in Coco and take it to television, then that's something which is very exciting. And therefore, my mandate as the president of the National Yogasana Sports uh, Federation is to join all the 30 states and create national championships, world championships, and uh, create an ecosystem which is economically viable for the athletes. We want that we train our judges, we train our uh, coaches, we train our athletes and give them a full-time employment opportunity through the sport and uh, take it to television. Our uh, vision on, uh, was set by our Honorable Prime Minister that yoga should be an Olympic sport, but to get to the Olympics, it's a very tedious uh, you know, roadmap. We have to get at least 80 countries into it. We have to have a continental setup and really have curriculum, not only for athletes, but even for, uh, you know, uh, coaches, etc. So one of the things that we've been working very hard on is to create a framework for Yogasana. So first of all, we've uh, launched a ranking system, a point system, 
and a gradation system. We've actually started working with the Muraji Desai National Institute of York for an electronic scoring system where we use uh, biomechanics and cameras to uh, judge the athletes on the stage. So it's, it's like integrating technology into yoga and uh, using artificial intelligence to actually create more and more uh, refinement in the uh, asanas uh, through the computer eye. One of the other things that we've uh, started working on is to uh, emulate karate. So for example, in karate, you have a white belt to black belt gradation. So you know uh, how good you are uh, against the person next to us. So um, we are actually creating eight levels of yogasana with more than 230 asanas and um, about four levels of coaches. So every coach will have at least two levels of coaching. Like in FIFA, we have a gradation and as they go into higher levels, they can get uh, better remuneration, better uh, employment opportunities globally. So um, this year, uh, with all this uh, going on and you've seen the uh, national championships that we did uh, in a very colorful and uh, uh, exciting way in Ahmedabad just recently. Um, this year, we are going to be working towards the world championship. Uh, one of the things that uh, I'm requesting the Ministry of Ayush, which uh, they are working on, uh, is to um, create uh, and enable the world setup for Yogasana, where every country actually participates. The Ministry of Sport is also working very hard with us on this. Um, we want to also ensure that um, as part of our growth this year, we would launch the Yogasana Super League. Like an IPL, we want to go into a television show, which is going to be like, uh, I would say, like an Indian Idol or a America's Got Talent. So what happens is with that, our athletes get a platform on a television um, uh, channel and uh, better remuneration. So I think yoga in itself uh, is right now a great uh, way to better yourself uh, individually, but now we want the youth to come into it. And um, uh, finally, you know, one of the aspirations that we have is that yogasana as a sport should at least contribute 50% of India's medal tallies when we go into Asian Games, Commonwealth Games, Olympics. So it's a very good uh, opportunity to showcase India's heritage globally. And, um, uh, uh, and therefore, one of the things that was announced the day before yesterday by our Honorable Prime Minister was that we'll have the Ayush passport or the Ayush visa. So my request to the Ministry of Ayush is to also enable the Ayush visa for Yogasana athletes that want to come into India and perform in the Yogasana Super League as well as uh, Yogasana World Championships. And with that, I would uh, once again thank uh, the Ministry of Ayush and our Hon Honorable Minister and all the August uh, panelists for giving us uh, opportunity and uh, taking Yogasana as a sport to the world. Thank you so much. Thank you, Udhidji. You, you are always a bundle of ideas and a uh, lot of enthusiasm and also the energy. And uh, under your leadership, definitely yoga sports will uh, grow to the new heights. Now, uh, it's my proud privilege to welcome my esteemed colleague in the ministry, the Director of Central Council for Research in Yoga and Anthropathy, Dr. Raghavinder Rao. He's a scholar and a, a PhD in yoga science. Uh, in, uh, and he hails from the, uh, he completed his uh, bachelor's in BNYS from the very famous uh, SDM College of uh, Naturopathy and Yogic Sciences. And uh, he has done a lot of research on uh, yoga for cancer care and palliative care. And during the last two years, he has initiated many research projects to create evidences for the acceptance of yoga as a therapy in the various uh, disease conditions. So with these uh, very few introductory remarks, it's my proud privilege to welcome uh, Dr. Raghavendra. Dr. Raghavendra. Thank you, Dr. Basaradiji, Honorable Minister Manjuparaji, distinguished speakers on the dais, senior officials in the Ministry of Ayush, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great privilege here today to be present before you in this August gathering 
to discuss and deliberate on India heals, emphasis on yoga. We heard about the philosophical context of yoga, how yoga can be used as a therapy. We heard about the research insights and evidence, a scientific evidence behind the functioning or behind the beneficial effects of yoga on health and disease by Dr. Dangajar. Now we need to look at how you can use yoga into practice, clinical practice. And this is the major important ball game today. When it comes to using yoga into clinical practice or integrating yoga into cancer care or any other care for that matter, a high level of evidence is required. And that comes through insightful research from premier institutions like Nimhans, Ames, and other institutions. We need to bring collaboration, collaborative effort, develop good amount of level one evidence, we call it as, so that we can put these in these guidelines. Let me give you a small example. Before I came to this ministry of Ayush, I was in an oncology case I set up, and I've been working in this setup for about 30 years. And what I saw here was, Yoga as a therapy is not just as a, because it is there that yoga should be used as therapy. It is because of public demand. Let me give you an example. We did a very big survey across Chennai, Bangalore, Mysore, Granavati Cancer Hospital in Mumbai, cancer hospitals in Ahmedabad, Delhi, Calcutta, and Katak. 1,800 patients were taken in the survey. And we looked at patients who were newly diagnosed with cancer patients, did a survey to see whether they are taking any form of Ayush therapies along with their cancer care. And those were all newly diagnosed cancer patients. 20% of them took recourse to palliative therapies or Ayush therapies. And in the advanced case, cases, 90% of them take, took recourse to Ayush therapies. And what was interesting was about this 20% who took in the primary stage of the cancer itself, early stage of cancer itself, 60% of them did not tell their doctor they're taking this therapy. That means to say there is a disconnect between modern medicine as well as Ayush when it comes to integrating both these two together. And this is where we need to bridge the gap. How do you bridge this gap? Creating level one evidence, putting this evidence into practice. And how do you do this? Putting this into guideline documents. So we've been fortunate enough to start the first integrative oncology department in 2014, which was the first one to be accredited by European Society for Medical Oncology. It's a very premier body in Europe, which deals with uh, guideline documents in management of clinical practice and management of cancer. We'll also be privileged to be having good amount of research which came from India, which got into the guideline document in National Cancer Care Network, UICC, American Society for Clinical Oncology, and Society for Integrative Oncology in, in US. And because of this guideline document, yoga has been now used for management of fatigue in cancer, management of nausea and emesis during chemotherapy in cancer, used for management of depression and anxiety in cancer patients, and people have the advantage of getting insurance. And this is what we need to create. That is the kind of structure we need to create today by generating evidence, putting them into guideline document, putting them into clinical practice so that the patients can get proper benefit out of it. And the allopathy as well as the mainstream medicine as well as the Ayush streams of medicine can come together in generating such kind of evidence. And that is what uh, CCRN as an institution under the patronage of our ministry is trying to propagate, to bring this wholesome integration in this one. And truly, India can be a destination when we start focusing yoga as a therapy because all this research evidence can come from here because we have huge treasure house of knowledge, large number of yoga experts, now yoga teachers. And if they all come together along with modern medicine and modern medical people, we can really create wonders. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Raghavendraji. La Kulish, uh, Yoga University is a very uh, a famous yoga university uh, inaugurated by our Honorable Prime Minister a decade ago and Rajeshri Muniji, a very famous yoga master under his able guidance it has been developed and uh, it's conducting many educational research program. Dr. Vijay Kumarji is the uh, register of this uh, very important uh, university and is an eminent uh, scholar and uh, did his uh, yogic studies in the very prestigious S. Vasa University. Now it is leading from the front to promote yoga therapy and research. So it's our privilege to welcome him and also request him to say a few words on India Hills. Dr. Vijay Kumar.
Thank you very much, Basarudi ji, and uh, my humble pranams to all the delegates and honorable minister Sahib and all the renowned personalities on the stage. As uh, our legendary speakers have detailedly elaborated the entire concept of yoga and philosophical applications of it. And when it comes to current scenario, if we see today's scientific innovation and technological advancement has deluded us to the belief that for every illness, there is a pill, there is a drug for it. But unfortunately, if we see the current prevalence of non-communicable diseases, existing healthcare system is of, you know, below average because we cannot even comprehend the basic medical requirements which has thrown towards healthcare from the versatile medical, uh, you know, scenarios. So in this scenario, if we see the future, the future of this current scenario would be integrating the existing evidence-based traditional as well as conventional medicine under one platform. That will be the future of healthcare system. Otherwise, I don't think there will be another you know, possibility to fulfill or suffice the very basic healthcare need of our existing population, not only for India, even for the global platform. So I think for the, this is the basic message we all got from the pandemic. If we see the pandemic influence, that clearly uh, state that the existing healthcare system is not sufficient. We need to focus on building a better integrative as well as holistic model of healing at the global level. So this policymakers and stakeholders, all of us who are in this field or who are related to this field should come together, join our hands together to establish a very sustainable and sufficient healthcare facility for the future generation and hope we will be able to you know deliver the same thank you very much for giving me this opportunity thank you thank you uh, dr vijay kumar ji now with the permission of the chair just uh, i will conclude the very nature of human being is uh, sukha pravrti and dukha nivrti Everybody would like to be happy always, but Dukkha follows, the pain follows like a shadow. This is a wonderful philosophy what every human being has to know. Yoga recognizes this. That's why Patanjali said, He yam Dukkham Anagatam. Dukkha is inevitable, but it can be prevented by the practice of yoga. That's why the philosophy, then the educationist, and the therapist and researchers, the panelist is a bundle of group of two Padmasri awardees, Dr. Nagendra Ji, Dr. Gangadharan Ji, national awardees, Aish uh, um, awardees. Uh, all are here and they put forward their views on various dimensions and possibilities of yoga in uh, health and healing. Many people say that yoga is just a philosophy, but I said, the philosophy into the science, science into the technology, into the appliances. So now, like Udi Sethi has mentioned, all these uh, uh, the researches and etc. to be put into the technologies and take to the world and uh, make it as an uh, grow it as an industry. So that's the the very objectives of this summit. So on behalf of the Ministry of Ayush, I thank the honourable Minister Sir. Dr. Munjapara, sir, always is very kind and generous and guiding from the front. And also, our Honorable Minister of Ayush, uh, Sri Sarvanand Sonewalji, is always guiding the entire ministry to take to the new heights under the able guidance of our Honorable Prime Ministers. So, along with the panelists, we have with us uh, our Honorable Additional Secretary, sir, Sri Patakji, and Joint Secretary, Madam Kavita, Madam, and uh, uh, ambassadors and dignitaries and all the student friends and uh, Ayush and just on behalf of the ministry, I thank you one and all for your gracious presence and we make this session very fruitful and useful. Thank you. And before we conclude, let us uh, pay our respect by presenting a memento to all the dignitaries and the dais. So I will present one by one because time is very short and we'll close the session in a, another two, three minutes.
Thank you, one and all. We conclude this session with Shanti Pata. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kashit Dukha Bhag Bhave Ma Kashit Dukha Bhag Bhave Om Shanti 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 Jai Hind. Thank you.